Oh, hi. My name is... My name's Jerry. Jo- My name's whatever you want it to be. Uh, this is an inscrutable web series we call A Courtship. Sad little arm at a puncture parade And I should be able to bridge a gap Between that and a smiling child In a vested cap who leans back on a lamppost You'd think the stink of a hospital meal And the drops of spit on steel Would be enough to remind me the fact That we'll likely collapse every line that we tap most Uh, Now fuck it, I'm running on luck I just clutch my cup like a pit bull Simple math should add to a fateful negation That's way too painful to deal with And if I shift my weight and let it hang and left I'm just overcompensating for this pain in my chest And if you synthesize a peace of mind And mailing it away for free That shit's still ain't for me I gotta find a way to steal it Thank you for this precious gift I don't think I asked for this Okay When you get the call that says your friend is dead Don't bother with regret That's just too obvious It said do something crazy Collect the remnants of the stinking dead Inject the mess directly in your wrinkly head And say goodbye to aging and we've been assured this really, really works So come summer, some of us are gonna look a couple months younger We'll use our dead relatives to fuel our new Hummers And keep us celebrating these Jack and knives like grandma used to make And these apple pies are jabbing in a friendly faces So add the fries and fucking buckle down For this unpleasant road trip we've planned you Oh, your language and your hats are dated And we cannot wait to name your cats Your black witch alienates the major demographics Who would choose to take vacations on your land So we'll lose you in the basement And there ain't shit you can do Thank you for this precious gift. I don't think I asked for this. Okay. Well, I've been told explicitly our needs are a deficiency. So when I sleep between shifts, it's in parentheses drawn in the bottom of a column. When I get out of bed, I've bled through the spreadsheet. And anybody telling us that money don't buy happiness is full of fucking shitter than the Beatles. And a week old piece of pizza needs to be eaten before you even think to breach the nails or the skin or the red meat. So come on down to therapy, I know you're as scared as me. We clutch our cups like a pimple does. This blood just gets sick of filling in and wish to wriggle free. <gasps> Or really just it seems it does to me Because I'm dreaming of a reason One could bleed enough Redeem themselves and sleep it off Suddenly I've come to see My blood is really bubbling From underneath a hundred things That someone dreaming stuck to me But even once I peel them up And sweep them underneath the rug An unforeseeable degree of the debris Has clung to me I mean to come completely undone We'll see who's running me And clean the rust between us Clean the rust between us Yeah is and it's been misunderstood for years literally years okay uh a courtship is just it's a web series about me who whoever you want me to be uh, getting to know huntsville alabama which they call rocket city uh, here's a poem i did at a, a, a place called low mill my name is joel elliott and this is entitled problems Poetry scrawled with sidewalk chalk on the backs of promotional posters helped to foster the notion that many have that I would be better off under the care of physicians in a hospital setting. They are not incorrect. In this particular instance, the only way they are correct that I would be better off under the care of physicians in a hospital setting is that I could ask the doctor whether or not I could borrow his pen. I lost mine. Pen, that is, not mind. Although the grasp I have on the ladder is tenuous, being assaulted time after time, silent insults from your own mind is a strenuous way to go about being. 
what you're seeing when you're saying my behavior is kind of crazy is just maybe simply me solving problems that you cannot see. Who wouldn't be better off under the care of physicians in a hospital setting? So let's stop pretending that finding a person whose words and whose actions don't meet expectations warrants celebration through relativism that we are much better than they. Let's all agree that the crazies among us are just solving problems that we cannot see. So, uh, yeah, lots of poetry, huh? This is the poetry episode or whatever. Whatever, whatever. Like I said, inscrutable web series this is. Uh, so, yeah, Eloisa and I, we kind of fell in love. It was wild. I mean, like, we obsessed on each other. And the... I mean, you watch episode one, it's just me and Eloisa talking on Periscope. Which, like, we had been talking for a couple of months before, you know, before that happened. Oh, here's a poem. My name is Joel Elliott, and this poem is entitled The Meaning of Love. Death is the greatest expression of love, to give up your life in support of another. Finding joy and sacrificing personal needs is the most happiness I've earned since I learned I could bleed. As a child, I had no grasp on the science behind why scratches and cuts would quiet my mind. Over time, I find there's a blurry line that forms a circle around self-harm and self-sacrifice. As a child, I didn't love myself enough to succeed. And so, extension cords still wrapped around my neck, I gazed up at the damage to the drop ceiling and wallowed in the delicious dread of my first failed suicide attempt. Have I no compassion for me? If I cared, I'd bear down and do it right the second time around. Spoiler alert, my second suicide attempt also failed. I knew my needs. I didn't love myself enough to succeed. Two attempts under my belt already, I saw that love was the answer. At the age of 11, I began searching for that love. As a child, I didn't understand that the pain that I thought was radiating from my face like a laser beam of agony was imperceptible to the vast majority of the people around me. As a white child in Baltimore City, I was told all the lies about the harm that will come to you by wandering through where the desperate people dwell. The hell of inner city life leads people to shoot you in the face just as soon as they would say hi to you, so they said. I did learn in the inner city that nobody likes to say hi. And I learned that nobody loves me. Nobody sees my needs clearly enough to execute me and free me from the endless thought assault that comes with being. I looked deeper in love to find love that was freeing. I discovered the toxic romantic relationship. When I found the depth of love I had craved to feel for myself, I enabled her to take away my agency. By finding someone capable of commanding her lover to end his own life in front of her, I had finally married self-sacrifice with my selfish need for self-negation. I've never felt so relieved as when she verbally encouraged me to pick up that pair of scissors. I've never felt so loved as when she verbally encouraged me to plunge that pair of scissors into my neck. That chapter of my life is over, and I've been a wreck ever since, convinced that I'll never find another love better than the depth of forever embracing oblivion. The gift of not existing slipped from my fingers as they signed divorce papers. There's a hole in my heart where abuse used to sit, and I don't know how I can rectify this unless I face how overdue I am in redefining the meaning of love. So, uh, right. Hey, uh, yeah, it's still a courtship. Web series. That makes no sense to anyone, including us. Uh, yeah. And Louisa and I, we fell in love. Uh, we talked. We talked, uh, excessively honestly. She called me her formidable. 
What that means is there's a song by an artist named Strome, S-T-R-O-M-A-E. Look that up. Strome, formidable. Pretty much my situation five years ago, how I was dropped off like a stray here in Rocket Town, Alabama. <laughs> oh, here's a poem. Next poet in your second round, Joel. I'm Joel Elliott. This is entitled, I Wish I Succeeded. As a child, I listened to the screams coming from the woods where I played as the woman was murdered. Having already abandoned all sense of authority's power or meaning, I turned to the community to help her. In Baltimore, the mistrust between the people and the police runs so deep that in the face of murder, calling 911 is still a last resort. <laughs> police lives matter because officers are people, but that is a fact that has never been in question. Police officers are people who are armed to the teeth, and they live with the same emotions and fears that we all do. They make mistakes and break the trust when they take liberties with the liberty of the citizens they are protecting. So we waited. But then we called. And when they came, the visceral fear of bodily harm gripped them one by one as backup called for backup, which called for backup until Baltimore City PD taught me as an eight-year-old child that in a poor neighborhood, there's no one who can help us. They waited. I sat. I listened to screams you've never heard in any horror film. There is no Wilhelm that can represent the screams that I heard that day. And they waited, and I waited, and two hours later she perished. In neighborhoods on the TV, valiant acts of local bravery are plain to see because all lives matter and all lives live in those communities. In my neighborhood where black lives live, they sit idly by while black lives die. And I can still hear her terrified screaming. I could not process this. So when I was nine, I attempted to end everything with extension cords tied to a drop ceiling. When I realized that I had survived, I cried for the world that I would have to continue to face. That was 28 years ago. I think about ending it every day. With what I see lately, with the mistrust that is, that is going on between us and the people who are sworn to protect us, I wish I had succeeded. Never mentioned that you were also a first timer to our slams as well. So give it up to Joel. I know. I know. He, he does a lot of performance stuff, right? He I does know, I stuff. I know. He's comfortable up here. He's been up here, but not in this realm. No, Welcome. No <laughs> Judges, we got a 7.2. We got a 10, and a 10 with something on it that I can't read. You can yell it if you want. There you go. Say it. Don't be scared. We got 28.8 for Joel. Give it up one more time for Joel. Real deal up in here. Give it up for your third poet. And, your and so here we are, still in Rocket Town talking to some of the same people who are living in some of the same places. We're bouncing person to person quicker this time. That's getting a little ridiculous. It's cold. I can tell you that. We've done a little rough sleeping in the last couple of weeks. Um, it's rougher than the last time. Like, when I got to Rocket Town, I was the uh, number one homeless comedian in Huntsville, Alabama. That's because I build myself as such, because I was famous once, and, uh, you know, being famous, it's not about talent, it's about telling people you're famous. But, 
Oh my god, that was a wild ride being the uh, number one homeless comedian. Everybody's assumed I've been homeless ever since, and which is not true. I, five years, I worked. I paid other people's half, you know, half of other people's bills through a lot of this. You know, we've done a lot of things. And uh, we'll talk about that as this inscrutable web series continues. Oh, here's a poem. I am a lazy monster, a living illusion of power. I am unwilling to self-criticize. I want to call you a loser. I will define myself by all the flaws I can find or imagine in everyday people. I build the steeple to my church of arrogance from bricks made of fear and insulting the people. I will exaggerate what makes you afraid till you've laid foundations for my rise to power. I will pretend that I'm going to save you when really I want to make sure that you cower. I am the side of this fight that is right, and I am the other side too. I am the hand that is pulling the strings of the marionette that is you. I am the college, electoral and otherwise. I am your churches and schools. I am the flattering voice that secretly plays you for fools. I am the candidate that you're going to vote for, as we fooled you into thinking that there can And, and yes, I am smoking pipe tobacco out of a page from the Bible. Don't you judge me. Don't you judge me. I once smoked uh, Alfred Ward's book. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's an inside joke between me and a comedian slash philosopher from Mobile, Alabama, which is also a neat town. But where I'm stuck is Rocket Town. I like Rocket Town. Here's a song I made, and you know what? We'll talk.
miente You are 